Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I shared how I'd passed a thousand subscriber milestone, which was an incredible thing to have happened, considering I'm just one chap muddling his way through building his first model railway in over 35 years. In this video, I thought I'd catch everyone up by telling the story of Shelfington so far. So, where to begin? Well, let's start with a bit of history. As a kid, growing up in the 1970s and early 1980s, I had several layouts, all of which I built with my dad. These culminated with a dedicated structure called Wellfield Shed, which was a 12 foot by 6 foot shed, built with the sole purpose of housing our model railway layout. Unfortunately, other than my memories, only a few blurry black and white snaps remained of myself and dad's endeavours. When I went off to university, the layout was dismantled and the world of model railways was forgotten. Fast forward to late 2021, when I happened across a TV show called Hornby, A Model World. Unfortunately, by this time, my dad was suffering from dementia. But we watched the show together and it sparked some memories that we could talk about. I even found some boxes of my old double O stock that had once ran during the days of Wellfield Shed, and these, along with the TV show, reignited my enthusiasm for model railways. So, in early 2022, over three decades after my last encounter with railway modelling, I decided to give it another try. Unfortunately, this time round, I didn't have a 12 foot by 6 foot space available to house a layout, so to keep things small, my first decision was to model in N-Gage rather than double O. I purchased a copy of Rail Modeler Pro and started designing small shelf style layouts that I thought I could easily accommodate somewhere in my house. Of course, the layout had to have a name and being a shelf layout, I decided that Shelfington would be a good one. Around this time, someone mentioned that it might be a good idea to document the build process. Now, being somewhat of an amateur photographer, this seemed like quite a natural step, and my initial thought was to add a model railway section to my website that was dedicated to the build. However, when creating a YouTube channel was suggested, I thought this was a much better idea. I'd been following along with lots of other people's builds on YouTube, and had found it both an interesting and informative experience. So why shouldn't I share my progress too? The only problem was that after watching these modellers, I wasn't sure that I had the skill set to add anything to the conversation. Being a complete novice, I thought I'd probably make a complete fool of myself. But maybe that was the point. What if I just documented what I did? I'd explain my thought processes, make a video of me doing it, and show the world whether it worked or not. What the heck, I'd give it a go. I wasn't quite ready to announce Shelfington to the world yet, so my first upload to the channel in February 2022 was a rather random video about building a gauge master ballasting thingy. I guess putting that first video up was a just do it moment and was the push I needed to get the channel up and running. The problem was that the content of the video wasn't really representative of what I wanted the channel to be about. So, in March 2022, my first real video was posted and a very nervous sounding me explained why I was going to build my first N-Gage layout and mentioned Shelvington for the first time. I had an immediate stroke of luck with the channel, in that Stephen of Elvenholm was my first ever subscriber, and he happened to mention the channel in one of his two to watch sections. That one mention meant that my subscriber count rocketed, and by the end of that week I had nearly 200 subscribers. So. Thank you, Stephen, once again for your kindness and generosity. These numbers spurred me on, and after designing many different shelf layouts, I finalised the track plan for Shelfington, which was version 13. And I used the word finalised quite wrongly. Next, I completed work on the baseboard, which was made from a 4 foot by 14 inch piece of birch plywood that was stiffened using 2 by one buttons around the edges, and had legs made from 2x2 timber. Next, I purchased enough track to build the track plan and also invested in my first N-Gage Loco, the magnificent Dapple Class 33. I then needed something to power the layout. DCC was something that was far off in the future when I had last been in the hobby, but being a bit of a techie geek with a background in computers, DCC was something I definitely wanted to embrace. 
After looking at many systems, I finally decided to purchase a DigiKeys DR5000 as my control system. Finally, I laid the track plan, hooked up the DCC system and ran my first loco in over 35 years. Now, obviously, the next thing to do would be to start thinking about the scenic elements, wouldn't it? Well, no. Only a month back in the hobby proper and I decided that a 4 foot by 14 inch layout wasn't going to cut it. I wanted something bigger. So, in April 2022, I began to build more baseboards. I decided that I could give some of my home office space over to the layout, where I could accommodate a baseboard that was roughly 10 feet long by 30 inches wide. As I already had the 4 foot baseboard and wanted to use it, I purchased a 6 foot by 30 inch baseboard and a 3 foot by 1 foot baseboard from Model Railway Solutions. I built the two new baseboards, added legs made from 2x2 timber, and aligned and levelled all three baseboards which were now situated in the train room, uh, I mean my office. I also had another think about the track plan, and ended up changing it to its final version of 19. And again, I think I may be using the word final in an experimental fashion. As May 2022 arrived, I was literally watching glue dry, as I performed the first of many experiments, with this one being to determine what glues would stick which materials together. I also revealed that I'd bought a load of track, enough at least to build the latest track plan. But yes, the track plan had changed again, and was now up to version 24. I also began experiment with point installation methods, at this time using solenoid point motors directly attached to the underside of the points, and embedded within the foam base. Vaccines were on my mind in June 2022, and I had a devil of a job joining two scenes together. I had my first ever encounter with rocket card glue, which didn't go well, although now I know how to use it properly, I think it's fair to say it's pretty good stuff. More scenic shenanigans were also tackled this month, as I came up with a way of implementing a removable scenic breakboard. I was also back to experimenting with point motors again, this time with surface mount solenoid motors that used a lovely pink paperclip as the push rod connection between the motor and the point tie bar. I also improved the way I would install below track solenoid motors using an enclosure box that incorporated a ballast guard plate to prevent ballast from falling through onto the point motor below. In July 2022, I started installing the foam base on top of the baseboards. I was happy with the way I did this at the time, but my method would come back and bite me. Now that the foam was down, I printed out the track plan, which was still at version 24 remarkably, and pinned it down on top of the foam. This was the first time I would see my vision of Shelfington in full size. However, while I still had space before I laid any of the track, I had another experiment in mind. I wanted to test how good my locos were at climbing a steep incline. I now had a small fleet of locos, with Class 03 and Class 08 shunters and a DMU being added to the Class 33. I put each of the locos through its paces, both with and without rolling stock, and concluded that I could probably get away with inclines of up to 4% in the space I had available. The final task I had for the month was to start laying the track. This wasn't exactly a success, and I struggled to lay short sections of S-curved flexible track and temporarily fix it to the form so I needed to have a rethink about the track plan. At the beginning of August 2022, my dad passed away, so work on Shelfington came to an abrupt halt. In late September, I started to get back into the swing of things, and began laying track again. I'd revised the track plan, now up to version 26, to remove all of the short sections of S-curved flexible track, which was a good move, as it made the track much easier to lay, and kept me sane. The channel hit a major milestone in September when it passed the 500 subscriber mark before the end of the month, which was a great boost to my spirits and spurred me on to produce more videos. Now that the track had been laid, the DCC bus wires were installed, and I could run my first trains on the layout.
As October 2022 arrived, my local collection was growing, and I decided that I needed a programming track to program CV values to avoid inadvertently changing incorrect settings when programming on the main track. Talking of the main track, now that I was running trains, I decided to perform a series of tests to make sure that the layout would work as designed. Firstly, I tried some operational testing and worked out whether or not I could perform the train operations I intended. Could I run two trains at once around the main loops while shunting wagons in the quarry area, for instance? Next, I performed some long train testing, as I was curious to know which trains could pull longer rakes around the inner loop, which included a tight second radius curve leading into the Mantlethorpe station area. In November 2022, I introduced new plans for the train room, and showed what I was aiming for in the longer term. These included a redesign for the Ledgetown quarry area, and quite a large extension for the layout that introduced Sill Harbour for the first time. This bumped the track design up to version 33. On a more practical front, I was experimenting with controlling points once again. I decided that solenoid control wasn't going to be for me, and had switched my attention to SG90 micro servo motors. I experimented with several methods of embedding the servos into the foam base, and eventually decided to use the enclosure box system that I'd been going to use when installing the solenoid motors directly beneath the track. It was December 2022 and I decided to treat myself to a rolling road. This was a revelation and would let me run in locos away from the layout and would also allow me to see the effect of modifying CV values while on the programming track. It would also no doubt be invaluable when trying to diagnose faults with locos when they occurred. I'd also purchased an N-Gage Society Hunslet, which was the first loco to be completely run in on the rolling road. December was also a month for procrastination, as I tried to get lots of build decisions sorted in my head. These were decisions such as, how was I going to physically install the track work behind the scenic breakboard? Would I have space to install the micro servo point motors in this area? And once they were installed, how was I going to operate the point motors? December was also the month when there was a Christmas miracle. I'd had trouble with the sound fitted Graham Farish Class 08 since the day I'd purchased it. It simply didn't run correctly and cut out as soon as you looked at it. However, after finding overspray from the application of weathering on the wheels and a wonky pickup, I attempted a fix. And the miracle was that the fix worked and I got the 08 running perfectly. I ended the year by breaking apart the layout, but reflected on what I'd learned so far while putting it together. After a couple of weeks break, I started the new year by introducing my new cricket machine. I detailed how I'd used Inkscape to design a new servo enclosure box and how I was going to use the cricket machine to cut several of them out of an A4 sheet of grey board. I was very excited about this machine and could see all sorts of scratch built modelling being accomplished while using it in the future. In February 2023, I'd removed most of the foam baseboard in order to fix a mistake I'd made when laying the foam originally back in July 2022. I said earlier that this would come back to bite me, as in an attempt to save money I'd spaced out the foam tiles on the bottom layer. This had introduced large gaps below the top level of foam, and when trying to install dropper wires they had mysteriously disappeared into these gaps instead of appearing below the baseboard. As I hadn't been able to run trains since Christmas, and once I'd fixed the form, I decided that I was going to lay a test track. I intended to use the track for loco and rolling stock testing, and to figure out if I needed to change the design of the eventual layout. My first loco review was performed in February, which was of the sound-fitted Graham Farish Class 31. It was an awful lot of work to film and photograph the source material for the review, but I quite enjoyed doing it, and decided that reviews would become a regular feature on the channel. Also in February, 
I set about fixing a problem with one of my baseboards, which needed to be extended to support a thinner piece of form than had originally been planned to go in that area. I performed my second local review in March 2023, which was of the excellent little Engage Society Hunslet. This loco was a miniature marvel, packed with technology, was a beautiful runner, and for the price, was amazing value for money. It was soon time to remove the test track again, and to make some significant progress with the foam base. I set about creating the two running levels that would be part of the eventual layout, cutting the foam to shape, and gluing or pinning it into place where appropriate. I then built a new test track that featured a transition between the two levels. In April 2023, I was in experimentation mode again, and I exploited the new test track to perform some curved incline testing. The test track had inclines that covered a 180 degree second radius curve and a fourth radius S curve, and I compared different locos pulling different weights of trains up each type of incline, with some interesting results. Next, instead of pulling the trains up the inclines, I tried pushing them, and got some even more interesting results. Also in April, I finally came up with the plan to implement the tricky bit of track work behind the scenic breakboard, and even mocked up an example to prove that the plan would work. April was also the month in which I discovered that some of my rolling stock was prone to derailing when being pushed into the sidings of the test track. So, I needed to investigate why, and whether or not the problem could be solved. In May 2023, I passed the 1,000 subscriber mark, which was a very humbling experience, and prompted me to make this video. I was still also investigating derailment problems, and had updated the test track to try and solve the issue. But, had both succeeded and failed. Okay, so we're now right up to date with developments on Shelfington and the channel in general, as of May 2023. I hope everyone has enjoyed the journey so far and will continue to follow along as I develop the layout, perform more experiments, review locos, share hints and tips, and hopefully give something back to the railway modelling community. That just leaves me to say. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'm going to take a short break from uploading videos for now to give me time to recharge and to take care of some real life stuff. But hopefully it won't be too long before I have another update on my progress. Bye.